tools, and other accessories on the download section of our website. The first component you want to prepare is the wire. Make sure your wire is intended for photovoltaic applications. The wire should not be damaged or oxidized. You should use a wire which is tin plated. No PVC wire should be used. Now let's prepare the wire. The first step is to cut the wire. Use an appropriate wire cutter that can cut multi-stranded PV wires. Cut the wire to the desired length and verify that the cut is performed correctly. Now you need to strip the wire. Use a suitable PV wire stripping tool. Make sure the blades are performing appropriately. Now to strip the wire. Check the stripping length ranges and respect the given tolerances. Select the correct wire gauge. Strip the wire to the desired length and verify the cut. All strands should be undamaged. The length of the stripped section of the wire should be within the tolerances. Always remember to confirm that you are within the tolerances. Now you've reached a crucial step in your assembly process. Crimping. A fundamental consideration at this point is to use the correct crimping pliers qualified by the manufacturer to ensure a certified procedure. We recommend using the Stoibli MC4 MC4 EVO 2 harmonized crimping pliers to achieve an IEC 62852 certified field installation. Now let's dive into the crimping process. Pay close attention. Bad crimping is a common source of installation failures. Open the pliers and hold them firmly. Hold the pliers sideways. Press to open the clamp and hold. Find the appropriate cross-section range for your wire and insert the metal crimp contact. To facilitate the insertion, slightly press the locator downwards. Once the contact is in the crimping pliers, align it until it looks like a letter U, like this. Great! Now let's slightly close the crimping tool and confirm that the die is dropping down equally on the connector body. Also, make sure that the crimp anvil is closing in alignment with the metal crimp terminal. Carefully hold your crimping pliers in place and take your pre-cut stripped PV wire. Insert the stripped end of the PV wire into the metal crimp contact until the strands come up against the clamp as far as it will allow. You want to hit against that bale that is on the other side. Sometimes you could even hear it tapping. Now hold the crimping pliers in place and pre-close them until they are grabbing onto the wire to preserve the alignment and position of the strands. We are now going to fully cycle the crimping pliers. Sometimes a click is audible. Once fully cycled, let go of the pliers and open the bale to release the crimped contact. Once you've crimped the contact on, it's very important that you visually inspect the crimp. Here are the things that you're looking for. All the strands have been caught in this crimp sleeve. No strands should be hanging out or pointing out in different directions. The crimp sleeve is not deformed or missing any portion of the crimp flaps. Both sides of the crimp must be symmetric, which means that they have to be the same size. Verify that you see what's called the brush on the other side of the crimp. This is where you can see the strands protruding on the other side of the crimp. And make sure that the distance between the back of the crimp and the insulation is not more than one millimeter. Great! Now that you have visually inspected your crimp, it's time to insert the wire with the crimp contact into the insulation body, that is your MC4 or MC4 EVO2 connector coupler. MC4 and MC4 EVO2 connector couplers come in male and female, or plug and socket. But be careful here, because it can get confusing. Keep in mind that the terms plug or male and socket or female refer to the internal interaction of the metal contacts. However, 
the insulator bodies look exactly the opposite. So when you look at this part, you might think to yourself, that's the plug, because it has the protruding portion. You would think this is the male. However, this is the female, or the socket. It's important to understand that this housing is protecting the socket inside. And this, which you might think is a female, is the male. If you take a look inside, you will see it has the plug portion of the coupler. With that in mind, we can proceed. Take your connector coupler, either the plug or the socket, and insert the wire with the crimp contact into it until engaged. A click sound can be heard when engaged correctly. Pull gently on the lead to make sure that the metal contact is securely in place inside the insulator body. You verify the sub-assembly with the test pins. The black test pins are for MC4. The red test pins are for MC4 EVO 2. Take the corresponding test pin and insert the appropriate end into the mating face of the insulator. If your sub-assembly was performed correctly, a portion of the white line will be visible. This indicates that the connector is far enough forward to allow for proper mating. Before you perform the torquing, it's recommended to pre-tighten the cap nut. This step is not mandatory, but it will make the torquing process easier. This step can be performed with the unlocking tool. The unlocking tool consists of two different wrenches. The grey one is for unlocking MC4 EVO2 couplers, and the black one unlocks MC4 couplers. However, to perform the pre-tightening of the connectors, you need to use this opening in the midsection of the wrench. Pay attention, the midsection of the grey wrench, MC4 EVO2, fits the MC4 insulator body and the MC4 black wrench matches the MC4 EVO2 insulator body to hold them in place. This is how we use them. Slide the insulator body into the circle opening in the midsection of the wrench to hold the body in place. Take the open end spanner and pre-tighten the cap nut. Remember, this is a pre-tightening step. This means your assembly is not yet complete you still need to perform the torquing process. The torque set is comprised of the insert, the socket wrench, and the torque tool. The Stäubli Toolkit comes with a calibrated torquing tool that can be set to the appropriate torque force depending on the conductor cross-section. This value ranges between 3.5 and 4.5 Newton meters. To set the torque tool, take the key out from the bottom of the tool. Insert the head of the key around the head of the tool. Turn counterclockwise to set the tool to the appropriate torque force. Once set, insert the front of the insulator body into the unlocking tool to secure. Slide the wire into the slot portion of the socket wrench insert to tighten. Make sure to fully engage the socket wrench insert onto the nut. Turn the torque tool until a click is heard. Let it click a couple of times to make sure torque is met. After torquing, you cannot remove the cap nut anymore, as now the wire gland is fully compressed. Look for the following visual cues. Make sure that the nut is encanted off to an angle. Verify that there is a small gap between the insulator and the base of the nut. With your plug and socket crimped on the wire and ready to be mated, you can proceed to connect your couplers. For this, line your connector couplers to make sure they can slide effortlessly into each other. You will hear a click when the couplers are engaged. Make sure there are no gaps between male and female coupler. Finally, check the correct engagement by lightly pulling on the connectors.
If you ever need to disconnect your connector couplers, take the unlocking tool and push it onto the locking clips of the socket and separate the coupling. Remember to de-energize your PV system before performing any procedures with the connectors.